Stephanie Belflant joins us now, and today we're talking about summer skin care. And if you have questions, you can send them to the doctors at WLBT.net. Certainly do. We have uh, Dr. William Wallace from Baptist Medical Center. He's a plastic surgeon, so he can probably fix most of your problems. But the whole <laughs> he's our favorite kind of doctor. <laughs> yes. But the, you're here really to tell us how to avoid skin damage exactly. of the sun and whatnot. Yes. Well, uh, with us coming into the summer months, Stephanie, uh, the sun is at its highest over our heads uh, here in the south. It's the hottest weather, and you're, you're liable to get the most uh, significant skin damage this time of the year. Uh, and, and damage that you get to your skin not only affects aging and makes your skin look worse, but more importantly, we do know that the major forms of skin cancer are secondary to sun exposure. Now, one of the myths is that African Americans cannot get sunburn. That is absolutely not true. African Americans can get sunburn too. They can. The, the melanin pigment in an African American skin does protect their skin from uh, severe sunburns and, and it is very uncommon to see many of the skin cancers in African Americans because of this protection of the melanin. But an African American person can certainly, if they're out in the sun for a prolonged period of time with no protection, can get sunburned. The show that comes on before us, the doctors, they were talking about this earlier this week and they were showing uh, a picture of, I guess you would call it just a, a freckle. Correct. as opposed to something that you need to be concerned about. And one of the things they showed was that if it was pretty much concentric, no jagged edges, it was okay but to watch it. Correct. But if it looked totally different, if it began to change shapes, and that was something to watch, and if it started itching, yes. I'd never heard of such a yes. thing. The, by far, the majority of skin cancers are what are called basal cell carcinomas or squamous cell carcinomas, and they are directly related to sun exposure during our life. Uh, they will usually appear, they are not a freckle, they are not a pre-existing mole, they just will start and they may be a little red patch that will get ulcerated mm -hmm. and will not heal. Uh, and if someone sees something like that, they need to have it evaluated. Now, by far the worst type of skin cancer is melanoma. The good thing is that melanoma only accounts for between 5 and 10 percent of all skin cancers, so it's not as common as the other two, but it is much more uh, severe. And that's the ones that will look dark, have an irregular border. The things to look for are a, a, any lesion, any spot on the skin that has an irregular border, has a very dark or changing pigmentation, or maybe a mixed pigmentation between lighter brown and darker brown and black or itching. Wow. Um, you know, the thing is when you're, can sunscreen help all of those things? That's what I'm curious to know. It can. Uh, the ultraviolet rays that affect the skin and, and do damage to it are basically divided into an ultraviolet A and an ultraviolet B. Uh, the ultraviolet B is the, is the main one that does uh, um, skin cancers. Ultraviolet A is more for the aging process, making us look wrinkled and, and, and older. Um, sunscreens can help both of those. Uh, it depends on the sunscreen that you use. Some sunscreens are just block out ultraviolet B and not A. You want to get a product that, that you look on there and it affects both ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B. To make sure you're getting that. And you were yes. talking about the controversy with sunscreens. There are some that go higher than 30, but are they as effective? That's right. It, it, there's been uh, uh, several new products uh, this year and last year are having um, uh, SPF numbers that go up in 50, 70, 100. Um, the feeling is that the SPF number is really related to how long you can stay in the sun before you particularly get burned. And really, uh, anything over a 30 or a 40 is probably going to give you a 97 or 98 percent coverage. And when you get to the upper ones, uh, there's a real controversy of whether it's even effective or yeah. whether it does much more than a uh, SPF of 30. Now yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about it in just a few minutes, but for now, for more health news, you can log on to our website, wlbt.com, and click on Medical Matters. 
Well, we're back with Stephanie Belflett and Dr. Wallace, and we're talking about summer skin care. We certainly are. And one thing that I have, is, is there such a thing as a safe tan? Because all these studies are coming out now that says you really do need the vitamin, the vitamin D, D from the I sun. And then, then they come out with these slogans that says there is no such thing as a safe tan. Help! <laughs> <laughs> I think that there is a possibility of having sun exposure, but wearing sunblock, most of us have seen that if you wear a 15 or a 30 sunblock and you get out, you will get a little bit of a tan. And you know that you're absorbing some ultraviolet rays, but not enough to, to do severe damage. The other thing is the time of exposure. Uh, you know, if you're out, obviously the, the uh, part of the day that is the worst to be in the sun is from about 10 or 11 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. That's when the sun is the highest and you're getting the most direct rays. Uh, during those times, you probably shouldn't be out over maybe 30 or 45 minutes at a time, or if you are, take breaks uh, and all. So that I think you can get some sun, some sun exposure and get your vitamin D, uh, but do it safely. Now, if someone comes to you and they've got a serious sunburn or if they're home, what should they do? Uh, they, I know there are some things that they shouldn't do, but what should they do to take care of it, to make sure there's not long-term damage? The, a, a really severe sunburn is one that the skin blisters and it's almost like a second degree burn. In those cases, you do not want to uh, break the skin, the little blisters and all. You want to try to leave everything intact because that's going to help the underlying skin that is damaged to heal on its own. Uh, basically, uh, try to take something for the discomfort because it's going to burn and sting. Uh, it, people talk about the old remedy was the uh, vinegar baths to get in and that sort of provided comfort and relief from the burning. But it doesn't really do anything. It, it's not going to do anything. What about aloe? Worst, aloe would, will, will help. Worst case scenario, if it is really a significant burn and with blistering, probably should see a physician or at least an emergency room and you very well may need to be treated as though it's a second degree burn with one of the medicated uh, creams. Mm. Our good friend Marshall Ramsey talks about how he's got a road map on the back of his back where all of his have been taken off so I suppose that's where you come Marshall to play. has had uh, he has had multiple uh, lesions that uh, some of which have been precancerous and some have been early melanomas mm. at least caught them mm -hmm. yes which all right good news Dr. William Wallace a plastic surgeon in Baptist Medical Center thanks so much for joining us today thank you thank you so much